All right, we are ready for Symphony of the Night. Maria, any percent with Wild Mouse. Take it away, sir. Wild Mouse here. This is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Maria, any percent on Sega Saturn. I'm just going to enter my name. Name entry really doesn't matter. You can type in Richter here and still play as Alucard. Oh. A wild as Josh has appeared. Excellent. <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> Everything's wild today. Um, so I'm not sure we should do the timing because there is a bit of a delay as far as the loading goes. It's going to be about 30 seconds. Uh, so after I press start, there's going to be a bit of loading. Then you're going to see Maria go into the castle. Uh, once she's inside the gate, that's when the time will start. And uh, I'm going to let uh, somebody on the couch, you know, give like a one, two, three start for when that is. Sound good, Turbo? Yeah. All right. So let's do this. Um, you can play around with the loading text. This is the most important feature. Of you the need game. to do yes. this. Yeah. You can Serious also features here. Also get used to this now go. loading <laughs> if you're playing this version of the game. So we're going to be playing as Reni or Maria Renard, who is originally inside of Rondo of Blood as a much younger girl, but now is a, a teenager. And the time is going to start. And now. go. So for the Saturn version of the game, we are going to do a couple of concessions here because, as you can see, Saturn Soten kind of chugs whenever something graphically intensive happens. Uh, Mouse, do you want to kind of talk about some of the very basic movement tech that Maria has at her disposal? Yeah, she's got this flying kick. Uh, she's got a front slide. She's got the super jump. And she's got this sweet little dive kick. And uh, you'll see me try those out in various combinations to move through and tr just try to get rid of lag, get lag off the screen as soon as possible. And she's got some crazy spells that you'll see in the boss rooms, but those are coming up. Another thing that Maria gets that's a pretty exclusive thing to her is she gets access to a triple jump, which is very nice for changing your positioning or readjusting as you need to. Another very distinct change for Maria, as opposed to Alucard or Richter, is Horror Super Jump, that Mouse used right there, can cut a very, very sharp angle, as you're seeing here. That allows her to have a lot of different options for moving through various types of rooms. Nice use of the triple jump there to just get barely on top of the top there before continuing on. She's also got a back dash that you can buffer through the blue doors. Very interesting. Saves a bit of time as well. I'm going to go for a little uh, zigzag here, which is really tough. And I missed it. That's all right. So, like, this category is pretty well optimized at this point between Wild Mouse. Uh, we also have Red Ninja Co Josh just off camera here, who's also done extensive work with Maria. Uh, Talwick Zealot. All these guys have really kind of worked to craft the RTA Maria run into its current incarnation. Really building off the work of other people as well. Um, just a really fun run. It's a little bit of a shame that this never got a release on a more modern console. Um, it's a little hard to get a hold of the Saturn version of this game. Shoutouts to Red Scarlet. All right. So we're going to be making our way to the Hippogriff. So as an example of the optimizations that have kind of come up more recently in the game, uh, the thing that we used to do for this is just get in front of Hippogriff and do a flamethrower move. But it was actually discovered that turning invincible using the four beast spell combined with Bible and the extra damage you deal when you're in that invincibility mode kills enemies really fast. <laughs> So it ended up saving a small portion of time, but in a run that's only about eight minutes total, like, you know, all these little optimizations are really kind of stack up on top of each other. Uh, do you want to kind of talk about how important little optimizations are for the shorter categories, Rasha? Oh, yeah. The, uh, the shortest Castlevania gets is about five minutes. Three is much the same. It, you need to squeeze out every little bit of time you can, and it's hard to see where that time comes from, but people like Mouse have worked really, really hard to uh, to squeeze out bits of time where you might not expect. I can't speak on exactly where because I'm not a Maria expert, but... <laughs> it's definitely one of those oh. things where... Getting that loading zone first try is some definitely time squeeze part, but can't do it every time. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where 
you go like, so what? It's like five frames faster. But again, when you're talking about such a small, if it's just like such a small change and it has that little effect, why not do it? And especially when you're putting in thousands of attempts in this game, like you want to make everyone as worthwhile as you can. Those of you more familiar with, say, the uh, Xbox Live Arcade version of this game or the PlayStation version of this game are probably scratching your heads at some of the loading zones here or there. <laughs> and uh, that's because programming for the Saturn was its own little special beast. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I take those for granted, uh, and then I find myself uh, exhibiting play for other people, and they're like, there's a loading zone there? <laughs> so here we have Medusa. And she is going to get the flamethrower treatment. We're going to want to do it on the uh, right side of the room so that we're closer to the door. When she dies, it generates uh, just a, a ton of lag. But if we're over here, we can escape pretty fast and avoid it. Yeah, otherwise you'd, the game would basically slow down a bunch as you watch the death animation. So nice exit there. We're going to hopefully see a pretty sweet out-of-bounds glitch here. Nice. Nice. Very nice. nice. And I believe that had the optimization as well, right? Yep. Um, uh, Josh discovered a really nice uh, momentum saving trick there where you can kick after the dive and uh, just extend her momentum from the dive kick through basically one and a half screens, it feels like. This is pretty typical Soten play. Yep. Just Nothing out of the ordinary here. Just super jumping in a black void. <laughs> Uh, as opposed to going through the imp room on Saturn, which adds about several years to the run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a that's a tense area. It's uh, pretty tough to diagonal up through there and not get hit by the Minotaur. Really smooth there as well. Uh, that room, if you do not take that damage boost correctly or you do not slide quickly enough, it's easy to get yourself killed. We're going to do big person strats and uh, take all the damage boosts through there. Damage boosts, not, uh, not the cornerstone of the Richter run, though, I take it right now. So. <laughs> not quite. Yeah, I like to Ooh, say... Oh, got the zip. Uh, and didn't follow it up with the jump, but that's all right. I like to say that Maria is Richter, but fun. Because <laughs> she has all of this movement tech, but you don't die instantly the minute that you miss one input. Yeah, but uh, the other two Soten characters are pretty sturdy, Alucard and Maria, that is. So we're going to be fighting Shaft as our final boss here. Uh, what strategy are we going to be employing for the Shaft fight? Oh, here gonna, I'm going to pray that I get the Soul Steel input first try. This All run right. comes down to doing uh, Soul Steel first try. Although the spell uh, is a bit different for Maria, she controls a full screen dragon um, and you get to control the dragon while it's on screen uh, unless you're dragon blitz <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be coming up on time here uh, mouse is going to be fighting the last boss and you're going to be looking for a very substantial like flash of white light which is going to be the final hit on the boss actually i don't believe that's there oh right yeah. <laughs> i forgot that's a problem that we have with uh yeah timing confirming time huh yeah. <laughs> timing this run for maria is a bit difficult right, because well, when you hear an egg cracking sound, though, that should be. Ah, oh, nice. goodness. And. Time. Time. Sub 8. Very comfortable sub 8. Wow. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Um, I'm going to leave it to the couch because I said everything I want to say, except thank you. Thank you for being here. Shoutouts to all the Maria runners that have contributed to the run up to this point, um, especially those that have continued to run it even on and off. We're going to be seeing this guy right here, our world-class 360 Richter runner is going to be doing a Richter any percent run on this fine beast here. So what a... What a privilege. That's It's going to feel perfect, right? Because you do fight stick, and that's the Saturn pad, which is it's, that's a fighting it's game basically, pad. Right? Yeah. Same thing, right? Works just the same. Yeah, really looking forward to this Richter run by Rasha. Um, 
Well, both of them, actually. The Richter All Bosses run is just phenomenal. It's, uh, I'm sorry, everybody, but it's objectively the greatest speedrun ever. <laughs> um, and uh, Saturn Richter is, uh, he is extra, and we'll be commenting on that in, uh, in a bit after we set up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wild Mouse, for that run of Symphony of the Night featuring Maria. Uh, can we get another round of applause for our runner, everybody? How about that? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.